Um, today I'm going to walk you through some of the more um, popular features in Data FMX. Um, there's a lot to cover, so I'm going to move pretty quick. Um, just a first introduction. Um, my name is Scott Prentice from Lexination. Uh, I've been working with Frame um, and Frame development for almost 20 years now. Um, I started developing Data FMX in mid-2006, um, and it's, it's uh, been growing ever since. Um, I also um, do a lot of custom help system development and um, I'm, I'm involved with playing with the Adobe Air and, and making Air help. I'm kind of excited about where that's going. Uh, so the things that are going to be covered in this presentation, um, just briefly, I'll be working with uh, topic files, creating topic files, um, adding elements to show you how different features work, adding references, um, be creating and working with maps. Uh, I'll be generating a PDF-ready um, book from a map a couple different times. Um, I'll show you uh, how to set that up for automatic list generation for your TOC and index and other generated lists, um, in addition to making sure your pagination and numbering works properly um, right off the bat. I'll be setting up a DITAVAL file, file for uh, filtering, be generating some output through the Open Toolkit, and if we have time, um, I'll show you some other features, uh, create archive, reference report, search in files, and where used. Um, I won't be explaining um, data concepts. Uh, there's a lot of that information on the Scriptorium website and elsewhere, so, um, so that's something I won't be really getting into. Um, I'll be working with Frame 9 on Windows XP um, on a Mac, and um, Data FMX can be installed on Frame versions 7.2 and 8, and also works uh, fine on Vista and Windows 7. Um, when you install Data FMX, it replaces the default Data support in Frame 8 and Frame 9, um, and adds a number of authoring and publishing features. Once it's installed, you can switch back and if you need to. Um, and um, if you have questions, um, as Alan said, you can enter them into the questions pod. Um, if you have complicated questions, we'll be saving those to the end, so we can be sure to get through everything. Um, and so now we'll move on over to frame. Um, so did FMX installs on a menu. Um, we'll start by creating some new files. Uh, you can create new files from the did FMX menu and you can also do it from the uh, whoa, from the uh, standard file menu. Um, so I'm going to start sorry. Start by creating a new topic. And first thing you'll notice in did FMX, uh, we provide a, a new file dialog where when you enter the title, uh, my new topic, um, it automatically creates the file name for you. Um, that algorithm for creating the file name is, is defined here in the new file options dialog. Uh, right now we're using a couple building blocks. Uh, the first one is for topic type, and it's using the first two characters of the topic type, followed by an underscore, followed by the title with uh, that's no spaces in lowercase. Uh, the online help provides information on all the different building blocks that you can use. There's lots of different things. Um, these aren't standard frame building blocks. They're good FMX uh, defined, and so you can have the date and time and different variations on the title, um, the actual unique ID of the topic. Uh, so there's lots of options. Um, we're just going to stick right now with this topic underscore file name. Um, and you specify the, the location that you're going to create the file. And we'll just say OK. And so it creates your new, your new file, puts in the title. Um, you'll notice that it's putting in some prolog information, and that's because I've enabled that in um, the data options dialog through the auto prolog options. And this allows you to automatically add information when you create and update files. So this is set to add the author, the creation date, and when you save or update, it'll add a modified date. Um, so you'll see that 
more as we go along. You can disable that if you want to, um, but some people find that to be a nice feature. So I'm going to add an element here. Um, this is my first paragraph. All right, that looks nice. Um, and just to show you more about this prologue feature, I'm going to save, um, close, and reopen the file. And you'll notice that it's added the rev revision date. Um, it's just added the node for the revision date. It doesn't actually add it till I save. So I'm just saving right now, and it, it adds the date. So each time you, you reopen the file, this revision date will change. Um, again, it's not a required feature, but if it works for you, that's great. Um, all right, so I'm going to add some more features. Sorry, some more elements. Uh-oh. This little pod is getting in the way. Okay. Um, so I'm going to add a list. Um, item 1. Item 2. Item three, all right, and well, sorry about that. This webinar pod is <laughs> all right. Um, so now I'm going to add a note. This is very important. And since this is important, we'll change the note type to important. And um, did FMX provide you with a set attributes command that makes it a little easier to work with attributes? Um, I'm just going to choose important from the list here and apply that so the label changes. It's pretty standard. Um, one of the nice features about this command is that if you're working with um, filtering attributes, and normally you would need to actually type in the value of filtering attributes. Um, you'd have to type in, if you're working with platform, you'd type in Windows or Mac or Linux. Um, and you'd always have to type them the same way. So it's up to your users to actually case things the same or type them the same. Um, did FMX allows you to predefine those values um, I've also got some here in audience, um, help web and print. Um, you can set those up on a per project basis or globally for your system. Um, so this will help um, keep those consistent and just make it easier to work with. Um, I'm not going to use those right now, but um, just wanted to point that out. All right, so let's um, let's add let's add a table. Um, there we go. And this is just a standard table. Um, heading one, heading two, heading three, V. That's good. Cell one, cell two, and cell three. Um, I'm going to add add a title in here. my new table. Um, and I'm also going to add a bunch of extra rows. Um, just You'll see why later, but um, I'm just going to add a number of rows um, to that table. And 